now is Fanny Waterman. Her father was an immigrant from Russia and she grew up in a very impoverished background but was always very committed to, to playing the piano from a very, very young age. She sort of took up her place at the Royal College and then with the Second World War uh, was, was called up into the Land Army. So George Dyson called a few of us up to say that you're going to be called up into the women's land. Army. Now, I'm no gardener, and I thought, what will I do in the Women's Land Army? But he said, if you get into a reserved profession, we might get you off from that. So I decided that I would try and teach, because that was a reserved profession. I've sat in with many of her lessons, and in actual fact, if you were to look at the, the pupils' music scores, there are so many pencil marks and things, but she really, really was committed to every little detail, and I think that's really one of the contributing factors to being such a good teacher. Two o'clock. Now it changes. Yes, that's a marvellous moment when it changes to E-flat. You'll just play it as, you know, it's just ordinary. To me, that's magic. Do it once again. And that's where the story of the Leeds really began, because it's her reputation, her travelling, her work as a teacher, that, that really um, began the competition, really. Leeds, September 1966. For ten days, the scene of one of the most remarkable gatherings of young musicians this country has ever known. The second Leeds International Piano Competition. She was a very close friend. Um, I think I became very much like her daughter and somebody I admired a great deal and she gave me the real sort of commitment to help keep her legacy going and she was wonderful, she was challenging um, and you know sort of really there's a big gap without her um, but certainly somebody that the world will never forget. <laughs>